Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. So, in the last couple of lectures, we have discussed associated primes, uh, support, and a primary decomposition of a module over an arbitrary commutative ring. Um, now, uh, today's, uh, today we are going to discuss modules of finite length. And as usual, we will assume our ring is commutative and V be an A module. Now, uh, to prepare, uh, first I want to observe uh, an interesting lemma uh, which is also known as butterfly lemma of Zasenhaus uh, which says that if I have uh, V and W are submodules of a module X and let V prime and W prime be submodules of V and W respectively then if you look at this quotient module V prime plus V intersection W and modulo V prime plus V intersection W prime. This is a submodule of the above because W prime is a submodule of W. This is isomorphic to W prime plus W intersection V modulo W prime plus W intersection V prime. Uh, so we want to prove these modules are isomorphic. And why is it called a butterfly lemma? I have drawn a picture here. So, so this, this picture looks like a butterfly. That is why it is called a butterfly lemma. Okay, how does one prove this? So, by symmetry, see this, by symmetry it is enough to prove that this left hand side module is isomorphic to V intersection W modulo V prime intersection W plus V intersection W prime because if I prove this this and then this equal to this so that is very easy to see now V intersection W is a submodule of V prime plus V intersection W this is bigger one similarly V prime intersection W plus V intersection W prime is a submodule of V prime plus V intersection W prime because this one is contained here and this one is contained here. So these are the submodules. And now we have therefore the map. We have a natural map. This is a submodule of this, this is a submodule of this. So I take this going to this, this quotient module, and this one is because this is a submodule of this. So we have a natural map. And this map is clearly surjective because any any element here is coming from uh, this one. Because any element here modulo this, it is an element in V intersection W. So that is coming from here. So this map is clearly surjective. Now, therefore, we want to prove that this map is injective. But injective means the kernel should be contained in. So. Remember here, this is the, the map, the, I want to prove this map is surjective. That means I want to prove that the kernel should be 0. That means, uh, if I, what is the element in the kernel? The one which goes to 0 here. That means it is in the intersection of V intersection W, intersection with this module. And if I prove that it is contained in this, that will prove the kernel is 0. But this is immediate. I have to prove this equality. Look, I have to prove this equality. So, uh, if we take element in the left hand side that is of the form x plus y, where x plus y is in this as well as in this, where that x is in v prime 
and y is in v intersection w prime then y is in w because w prime is a subset of w so y is in w and therefore x plus y is in v prime intersection w plus v intersection w prime because that's obvious so that proves the kernel is um, uh, zero therefore the map is an isomorphism and therefore we it proves the zasenos butterfly lemma now how, how am i going to use it so first let us define uh, let us make a definition a module v and suppose i have a finite sequence of sub modules decreasing where it starts with v and ends with zero and then the quotient modules successive quotient modules v1 by v0 by v1 and so on vn minus 1 by vn these are called quotients of this sequence so we say that the sequence the decreasing sequence of sub modules and another one decreasing sequence of sub modules they are equivalent if if the number of sub modules are same m equal to n and there exist a permutation on n letters such that the quotients are isomorphic the v, uh, vi by vi plus 1 and v, v prime sigma i by v prime sigma i plus 1 if these quotients are isomorphic for all uh, 0 to n minus 1 then we call these two decreasing sequence of sub modules to be equivalent also we say that the sequence of decreasing sub modules which starts with v and ends with 0 there is a refinement of a sequence v0 to vn to vn v0 the decreasing sequence of sub modules the lengths are different but we say that this is a refinement of this if each vi appears in this uh, sequence uh, v v v0 prime v1 prime and so on if it appears there somewhere then we say that this is a refinement of this in other words we should be able to uh, this v prime sequence is obtained by inserting some more terms in the given sequence then we call it a, a refinement so Uh, that is what it is that all these v's vi's appear in this sequence then we call it a refinement okay then now very important theorem of schreier schreier's refinement theorem says that if i have a module and if i have two decreasing sequences which starts with 0 and ends at v this is another one of sub modules they have the equivalent refinements so the terms may not be the same here but i can both of them will be refinement of some bigger sequence so we want to prove that this we want to refine them both so that they become equivalent all right so uh, for i equal to i am going to insert more terms in both the sequences so Uh, let us define for i equal to zero to n minus one and j equal to zero to m. M is the second the m is the number of um, sub modules in the second sequence. So v i j that is v i plus one plus v i intersection w j and it is clear that v i j contains v i j plus one because Um, the, the w j s are decreasing and what is v i not v i not is by definition j is zero so it is v i plus one v i intersection w not but w not is whole v so this is v i only and this is v i plus one and that is decreasing therefore it is v i so therefore and what about v i m v i m is v i plus one by definition v i intersection w m But W M is zero, so this is nothing. So this is V I M is V I plus one. This is true for all i from zero to n minus one and j from zero to m minus one. So therefore we have V here, which is V zero zero, which is 
which contains 0 1 and will go on decreasing till V 0 m, but V 0 m is V 1 because i is 0. So, this is V m V 1 and now you start with V 1 0, V 1 0 is V 1. So, this is actually same term therefore, I wrote equality here this again the same V 1 1 goes on till V 1 m, but V 1 m is V 2 and so on. So, we have such a decreasing sequence and where this equality equal to this, this equal to this and so on and this last one is V n which is 0. So, therefore, this sequence which I have defined it is a refinement of the sequence, it is a refinement of this given sequence of decreasing submodel V 0 to V n alright and what are the quotients? Quotients are of the refinement V i j modulo V i comma j plus 1, but these are the quotients. So, that is because we have noted V i m is V i plus 1 which is V i plus 1 0. So, it is this is the refinement. Now, similarly I can now use the other sequence to define V j i equal to W j plus 1 plus W j intersection V i and these I do it for 0 to i equal to 0 to n and j equal to 0 to m minus 1. So, therefore, by the same way we get a refinement W j i. Now, j i is running from 0 to n minus 1 and j is running from 0 to m minus 1 and this is a refinement of this and the, su the successive quotients are W j i mod W j i W j i plus 1. But now, we want to prove that these quotients are same. So, butterfly lemma will tell us when I apply to V equal to V i, W equal to W j, V prime equal to V i plus 1 and W prime equal to W j plus 1, we will have this quotient. Just put on the definitions and apply butterfly lemma, then you will get this converted into this submodel and where this is the quotient of the refinement serial. So, we have proved that these refinements have the same quotients, but now also we have to say that the permutations. So, because look at the pairs i comma j, i is varying from 1 to n minus 1 and j is varying from j to uh, 0 to m minus 1 and j the other way just interchange the coordinates. So, the numbers are same, these two indexing sets have the same cardinality and the sigma is a permutation when you switch the coordinates, this is a permutation. So, therefore, this is a permutation. So, therefore, we have proved the assertion that uh, these two sequences have the common refinement. Okay. So, this, this also I want to uh, recall a definition of a simple module. Simple module means first of all the module is non-zero and the only submodules are 0 and v. For example, if, if you are over a field, if a the base ring is a field, then k is simple k module. More generally, if you have a vector space, then vector space is simple if it is non-zero and the dimension should be 1. So, when the dimension is 1, it is non-zero. So, I do not have to say it is non-zero. So, vector space is simple if and only if the dimension is 1. <coughs> Alright, now uh, uh, how do you test some modules are simple or not? <coughs> oh, we say the module is, we want to test the module is simple, we want to generalize this from the vector spaces. So, a module V is simple if and only V is isomorphic to as a A module a by m, where m is the maximal ideal in A. Proof is very simple. <coughs> so, suppose first assume V is simple, then we know V is non-zero and if I take any non-zero element of V and take the submodule generated by X, that has to be the whole V because it is a non-zero and the only submodules are either 0 or the whole. So, therefore, 
v generated by a x and we have a model homomorphism f from a to v just mapping a to a times x this is clearly surjective because v is generated by x therefore v will be isomorphic to a modulo the kernel of f and the kernel of f has to be the maximal because a mod kernel of f is a simple module it's isomorphic to v therefore it is a simple module therefore it can't have any proper ideals so therefore a mod kernel of f has to be a field therefore m is a maximal ideal there so one way we approved the other way if you have an ideal in the ring a then the module a by a is simple if and only if a is a maximal ideal that is this is also very easy because this module is simple means it is non zero first so therefore a is a proper ideal and there is no other ideal in this uh, residue class ring because the proper ideal of this ring will give you a proper sub module of a by a so that proves the proposition all right if you have a module v and a sub module then the quotient module is simple if and only if first of all u is a proper sub module and every sub module w in between either v u equal to w or w equal to v so these are this is like a maximal ideal so uh, a sub module uh, the quotient module is simple if and only if there is no proper sub module in between the module v and the sub module u now this allows us to make a definition a decreasing sequence of sub modules it's called a composition series or jordan order series if all its quotients are simple sub modules that means you can't first of all that means these are proper uh, inclusions and you can't insert anybody in between that means you cannot make this sequence refine so that's what one has written so uh, the uh, the composition series or jordan order series means in between any two terms there we cannot insert any proper sub module for every i equivalently this given decreasing sequence of sub modules has no proper refinement and in this case the natural number n that is called the length of the jordan order series so uh, the next theorem is jordan order theorem which say that any two composition series of a module are equivalent that in particular they have the same number of terms so that means in particular they have the same lengths this is very important theorem it was Uh, proved for the groups first the abelian groups first that is because jordan was studying galois theory and uh, therefore it was very important to consider abelian groups and uh, jordan order series like that uh, more generally also consider one consider such a series for arbitrary groups but you have to assume that in the uh, decreasing sequence of subgroups each one is normal in the next one and so on because then the quotients will make sense okay the jordan order theorem is clear from shaya's refinement theorem because once you have a composition series you cannot refine any more and therefore it has to be refinement of itself only so therefore if i take two composition series shaya's refinement theorem says that they have a common refinement but they each one is a refinement of itself so therefore these two any two composition series are equivalent and in particular they have the same number of terms and the same number same quotients also so that is jordan theorem or jordan holder theorem so remember that the shaya's refinement theorem is more general and it was proved later than the jordan holder theorem actually Uh, so uh, but now the proofs i have used the uh, the the theorem which was proved later because it was more general anyway so now we can make a definition 
an A module V which, which has a composition series that is called a module of finite length. And in this case, the length of that composition series of V have the same length. This is very different because we have just proved in a Jordan order theorem that any two have the same length. So this length is well defined and that length I will we call that is the length of V and it is denoted by L A V. So length of V as a A module. Okay, note that when will the length be zero? That means the Jordan older series uh, it has a composition series and that has only one term namely 0. So V is 0 that is equivalent to saying V is 0. When will the length be equal to 1? That means V has to be simple because V is the, the composition starts series starts with V and ends with 0 and there can't be any more terms because all the terms are not there because length is 1 and therefore the quotient is simple. So that means V by 0 is simple, so that is V is simple. So um, if a module does not have composition series, then we will say that module V is not of finite length and in that case we will put length of V to be infinity. All right, now we have to uh, make a criterion, how do we decide whether a module has a composition series or not. And now we are discussing that. Uh, so uh, the corollaries which I deduce from Jordan order theorem that will lead to some answers. All right. So suppose I have a module of finite length, then any strictly decreasing sequence of submodules can be refined to composition series. But the assumption is V should have finite length. Okay. In particular, the length of every such sequence is at most the length of the module V. So this should be V. So this is also a, a immediate from the refinement theorem because given this sequence, I will keep refining it. And already I know there is a composition series for V that exists because V is of finite length and this I may, this I by inserting more and more terms I refine and make it as a composition series. But then these two composition series have the same length and therefore this M will be at most length of V because length of V is by definition length of a composition series. Now this one the next proposition will allow us to compare the lengths of a module and its submodule and the quotient module. So if V is a submodule of V, U is a submodule of V, then length of U as A module and length of V by U as A module that is same thing as length of V. Alright. So this this formula is even true for when the length is not finite. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the next statement is if a length of V is finite and U is a proper submodule of V, then length of U is strictly smaller than length of V because uh, we can increase the composition series at least by one. This is a triviality. So length of V is finite and U is non-zero, then length of the quotient module is strictly less than length of V. If length of U is finite and length of V by U is also finite, then length of V is also finite. This is also easy because length is finite, so U has a composition series and this is finite, so it has a composition series. So lift the elements in the composition series and you will get a composition series. So I am not, I will not prove this proposition. It is left as an exercise. All right. So, similarly, so we can deduce immediately from this, if I have a short exact sequence of A modules, V prime to V to V double prime, this is a short exact sequence means uh, 
it's here the kernel of this map equal to the image of this map this map is injective and this map is surjective that is the meaning of the fact that this sequence is an exact sequence of sub module a, a modules now the assertion is if v is of finite length v is finite length if and only if this middle one is finite length if and only if the outer ones also are of finite length and in that case the length is additive that means length of the middle one is length of v prime plus length of v double prime all right this is because the, you can think this is a sub module of this and v double prime is a quotient module of this so the earlier proposition will tell you this length is additive so this is also see this property can be described by saying that length is an additive function on the category of a modules okay more general version of this corollary is if you have a long exact sequence like this which has many terms so that means we have the maps and at each stage kernel equal to the image kernel of the later map is the image of the earlier map then you call such a sequence to be exact sequence of a modules suppose in this sequence of modules all but one of them is are all, suppose that all but one of the vi are of finite length that means only vi may not be finite length and all others are finite length then the assertion is the remaining vi is also finite length and in that case we have alternating sums of the lengths is zero so this assertion is trivial for any n less equal to 1 because there is only either zero term or only uh, one term in that case the assertion is this is isomorphism so this equal to this therefore so this is assertion is clear for n equal to less equal to n minus 1 so i am going to prove the assertion by induction on n therefore we assume first n is at least 2 and i am going to put this kernel of so we know kernel of f1 equal to image of f2 and i am going to call it u then we can break this long exact sequence into two exact sequences namely is u is the kernel of this f1 so therefore we have the short exact sequence and now this u is also the image of f2 so i will forget v1 and put it at u and therefore this sequence is clearly exact so these are two exact sequences now this length is this i can apply the induction and therefore the assertion follows by the above corollary because for this alternating sum is zero and for this i will replace the length of u by coming from here alternating sum again so therefore the assertion is clear by induction on n and um, we will continue after the next uh, Uh, break so that we will uh, connect this concept of finite length with the support and associated prime ideals and also relations with the noetherian and artinian modules so thank you